Welcome to video number 10 in the Fortitude Tech Python package walkthrough. This is the grand finale and we are going to end with a bang because we will be going through the portfolio optimization and parameter uncertainty example that introduces a new method called exposure stacking. This is something that we just released recently so it's truly fresh off the press. All right. As always, we start at the front page of the repository and then navigate to examples. And here you can see that example number nine is called portfolio optimization and parameter uncertainty. It is the accompanied code to an article which is also called portfolio optimization and parameter uncertainty. And let's actually start by going into that one and then see what it contains. So here we will open it in our browser and then just go through some of the sections. So in the introduction, uh, we explain that portfolio optimization is still one of the main areas of research in quantitative investment management. But it is well known that portfolio optimization problems are highly sensitive to parameter estimates. And in fact, many practitioners, they believe that they are so sensitive that they are almost useless in practice. In this article, we argue that first and foremost, you must specify the optimization problem correctly. So this to include risk budgets and risk targets and transaction costs. And this will help to alleviate some of the problems. But even in that case, uh, parameter uncertainty will still affect um, the results quite significantly. So you need to do something else. A popular way to incorporate parameter uncertainty in practice uh, is called resampled optimization. So this is basically simulating many different parameters, computing an optimal portfolio, and then taking an average at the end. And this is what we introduce here um, in the introduction. Um, the thing is that the problem with the usual method as it is right now is that it just takes a simple equally weighted average. So one of the critiques is that there's no reason for taking this uh, equally weighted average and, and there's no mathematical rationale for doing that. So this article tries to give you the right perspectives to understand the resampling approach and to examine what are we actually assuming when we're using this uh, usual naive method uh, and can we do something which is better uh, about it. So. In the article here, we argue that we can actually analyze the portfolio optimization problem from a bias variance trade-off, similar to when you have statistical models. So from this perspective, we view the market model or parameter inputs as data and then the final optimal exposures uh, of a portfolio as estimates. And uh, then we can analyze it from the bias variance perspective and see what we can do about it. So first here, we define everything mathematically, the perspectives that you need to understand. And then we define this weighted resampled exposures estimator. The thing is here, if you try to analyze this estimator from a bias variance perspective against the, the true value of the exposures, then first of all, we don't really know the true values. If, if we did that, we could just <laughs> invest in this way. We, we, we didn't need to do anything else. But also, when you look at this vector mean squared error, uh, it's not going to give you anything that is uh, very, very interesting because it's just going to try to replicate this, uh, this target that you have. So instead of doing that, we say that we work with objectives that have a similar form to this. And uh, in this case, it is uh, stacked regressions uh, for multivariate targets. Uh, so one first natural guess uh, when you work with these stacked regressions is perhaps this uh, objective function that we write out here. But we show that this objective function will always give weights that are just one over B. Uh, so corresponding to this usual resample optimization and it is because it is implemented in a quite a naive way, this, this stacking problem. It's, it's not really how people recommend to use stacking. Uh, so this is what we, uh, what we correct uh, later on, where we say, okay, now let's use stacking the correct uh, way uh, with cross validation. Uh, and this is, uh, we present some of the thoughts uh, and the setup here. And then we end with this objective function. The important point about this objective function is that after some rewriting, uh, you can specify this as a quadratic programming problem. Uh, and you can find in the appendix uh, where you can see how it looks directly. Uh, so then you are able to solve it in a fast and stable way. All right. Um, then we get to the case study. So the case study, this is, this is where we will be going through the code 
that um, replicates some of the results uh, here. The first thing we do in the case study is just to analyze the parameter importance and uh, this analysis has probably done uh, many times before so we just you know replicate it for convenience because we will need <laughs> some of the results uh, later on. So here we optimize efficient frontiers where we introduce uncertainty into the means and then uh, variances and then correlations. So here uh, you can see that the red dots this is uncertainty in the means and the green dots that's uncertainty in the variances and then the dark dots that's uncertainty in the correlations. And what you will be able to see from these graphs is that mean uncertainty generally affects uh, the risk adjusted return the most. Um, yeah. And here we, we do uh, we do different degrees of uncertainty with this number of observation parameter that we call n. Um, yeah, that you can see in the code also a bit later. All right, and then finally we go into and compare um, equal weighted resampling to exposure stacking. So basically we uh, we find portfolios according to the exposure stacking procedure, and then we look at on additional new samples how does it perform out of sample there to see if we get a better risk adjusted return or not. So when you look here, uh, we plot a distribution for the risk adjusted return in this case. And what we can see is that when we use two-fold exposure stacking, that it has the potential to give a better risk adjusted return uh, than the rest. We can see that uh, for this simple case study that we have now, that the five-fold and the b-fold um, exposure stacking corresponds to or gives something that, that has practically the same portfolios as the usual resampled uh, frontier. So it's not that interesting in, in, in this case. Um, so here uh, we examine whether the better risk adjusted return comes from a significant deviation in the risk level of the portfolio. So, so what we can see is that for the two-fold exposure stacking is that the portfolio uh, have a lower risk distribution is skewed more to the left but it has almost the same expected return as the resampled uh, efficient frontier. So this is the source of uh, the higher risk adjusted return for this distribution. We can see that for the frontier portfolio, the, both the risk and the return targets uh, are deviate quite significantly from the resampled version. Uh, we can also see that we cannot just say that um, the, the, the lower the number of folds, uh, the, the lower the risk, because we can see that five fold has a higher risk than the B fold, for example. So, um, so yeah, we can't, we can't make that conclusion yet. All right. So here and the conclusion of uh, this article is basically telling you that now we have presented this framework, we have presented these new perspectives. It's too early for us to conclude which effect it will have in practice in terms of the risk adjusted return. The only thing we show that it has potential and it seems that it's not going to perform worse than uh, just equal weighted uh, resampling. So this is why we encourage you to really, really try to use this method extensively in different uh, cases, different risk measures, different parameters, uh, yeah, and report back to us what you find. And because yeah, we will be very interested to hear about that. All right, let's go back to the code and then uh, then see um, how we generated the plots. So yes, uh, in this code uh, we use many different packages uh, <laughs> that, that we import here. So we do optimization, plotting, and things like that. But we work with the parameters that we have been working with before uh, in the comparison of mean variance and mean c-bar optimization uh, and just uh, use this function low parameters. Then we compute uh, the volatilities and the correlations because this is something that we will be needing um, later on where we um, yeah, introduce uncertainty into different parameters. Uh, here we just specify a portfolio with long only constraints and this is quite straightforward and then here we have uh, these parameter uncertainty specification and resampling parameters so basically you can adjust these and then change um, yeah ch change these parameters and then, then see what the results are and you can also adjust how you introduce uncertainty and all of that uh, in this case uh, here we just uh, estimate this base case frontier that we use uh, in the plots uh, just to see what is the correct version on, on this data. All right, so when we analyze this parameter importance, uh, then yeah, basically you should imagine that we sample a lot of expected return vectors and then we input that as the expected return in the optimization while we keep the risk fixed. In the next uh, 
cell here uh, we will uh, keep the returns fixed and the correlations fixed and then just introduce the uncertainty in volatilities and then finally we will keep the volatilities and the returns fixed while introducing uncertainty in the correlations if you go through this code and if you look at how we have implemented the optimization you should be able to see that this is what happens and then finally we make uh, one of the plots uh, from the article so you can see that <laughs> the last plot we did was with n equal to 100 uh, but you can go up in the cold cell and then change it to something else uh, so you can see that you can, if you can replicate the n equal to 50 for instance okay here we have some additional plots and this is basically to to give you a sense of how much uncertainty are we introducing in the means with the different observations so basically we know this result uh, for for the sample mean uh, that it will have a variance which is uh, yeah uh, a tenth of uh, of the variance uh, of the the actual distribution if we have n equal to 10 for example so you can see the blue curve this is the, this is the simulation for the dm equities while uh, the orange curve this is the mean uncertainty if you use 10 observations the green curve is if you use 15 observations and then the red curve is if you use 100 observations so it's really up to you when you look at, at these things and then say okay uh, is this is this the amount of uncertainty that i think there will be in the mean estimates uh, that i have or not okay so here uh, next up we uh, we just analyze some convergence of when is it that these resampled optimization actually start to give us uh, portfolio exposures that that um, yeah are quite stable uh, so here uh, the efficient frontiers we, we have uh, made they uh, they use nine portfolios so when we select index four uh, in python then this is just the middle portfolio that we work with for the rest of the example and here we just show you from the usual frontier how um, yeah, the middle portfolio looks and then you can see it's the last four assets that have the most weight so this is the one where we'll be tracking uh, how their weights developed in resample optimization uh, because they are the largest so this is what you see here and um, where you can see that a uh, number of bootstrap samples and then the exposure value uh, for the for the highest four exposures that we have here so what we can see here is that after approximately 200 or 300, 400, <laughs> it starts to converge to something. Uh, and if you use maybe 500 observations, then, then you are quite safe in relation to whether they have converged uh, or not. Um, but of course, this is just for the simple case for few assets. So if you have a more complex problem, uh, you might need more simulations. We say that uh, if, we, if we have 1,000, then usually this is sufficient um, yeah for the problems that we have seen at least but it's really up to you the trade-off between computation time and um, accuracy uh, you, you you have to decide for that all right so next we'll uh, we'll go and uh, define an exposure stacking function and uh, in this function we allow you to specify the L fold uh, the L parameter and how many of the bootstrap samples you want to use this is something that we will do later to see yeah if we take the first 100 samples 500 samples yeah to see how the the estimator behaves um, it implements equation four uh, in the last appendix uh, from the article uh, so when you read through the code you should be able to recognize that uh, it's a special case where all the validation sets have equal size um, okay so here we just call the function compute uh, these different exposure estimates um, and then we uh, we compare it uh, yeah, in one table. So here we can see that uh, yeah, the largest differences between the resampled optimization and uh, exposure stacking is when we have uh, a lower L, so if it's two or five or B. But again, this is just one simulation study that we have. So we can't really make any definite conclusions on whether this is a general rule or not that if you do b fold that it will look more uh, as resample optimization it's it's simply too early for that uh, the only conclusions that we can make is that exposure stacking seems to give us re results that are not worse uh, than than the resample optimization and that they have potential for giving something better so when they give something better and how to use it in a smart way it's still something that we need to to examine very very carefully and it's something that we hope that you will do uh, and report back to us so we can all uh, learn how to use this method all right after computing these we just uh, simulate some out of sample 
observations and then we define a function for computing uh, the risk and return so the means and the, the variances uh, and then we just apply this function to the different portfolios that we have so the usual resampling all the exposure stacking and then just the normal uh, efficient frontier portfolio and then we also compute the risk adjusted returns uh, for them so here we first plot uh, the risk adjusted return distribution uh, where we can see so this is one of the plots from the article where you can see that you have this uh, twofold exposure stacking uh, giving better performance and then uh, after that uh, we plot this uh, risk uh, distribution where we see that the twofold exposure stacking has a lower risk and uh, here uh, the expected return distribution where we can see that the twofold exposure stacking has a expected return similar to the other uh, resampling approaches. Uh, so with a lower risk and a higher return, then uh, it gives you a, a higher risk adjusted return. All right. Here uh, we use this uh, yeah, num samples uh, parameter in the exposure stacking function. And this is basically to allow you to see how does the exposure stacking estimator behave as a function of the number of uh, resamples that uh, that you give it. Uh, so so this is one of the things that we thought were interesting. So first we say let's say we only use 100 and let's say that we only use 500 and then we do that uh, yeah, plot uh, to see how it looks just for the risk adjusted return. So here we can see that uh, for the for the resample portfolio uh, the effect is, uh, is quite minor uh, depend, uh, depending on how many samples that you have. And uh, if you look at the twofold exposure stacking, then we can see that the difference is uh, a bit larger than before. And uh, finally, we have the fivefold. Uh, it, it starts to diminish a bit the difference, uh, and then the bfold. Uh, it's also <laughs> quite uh, quite insignificant the, the differences that we have here. Okay, so this was uh, the walkthrough of the ninth example. And uh, as always, uh, if you like these videos, if you like this package. I encourage you to give this repository a GitHub star and then I hope to see you in the next video.